Hello, I'm Paul Beckwith, and I'm continuing my discussions on the Amazon rainforest, you know, and what actually is happening there in terms of the amount of burn, you know, both in previous years and this year, and how it impacts the big picture of the global climate, the global carbon sink. You know, many people, for good reason, call the Amazon rainforest the lungs of our planet. Also, many people call the coral reefs the sort of the rainforest of the seas. And we know, we know the, um, the stress that is occurring on the coral reefs. That's a topic for other videos, of course. So let's keep our focus on the Amazon rainforest. And this is a very good article um, uh, um, that, was, that first came out April 1st of 2019 and was updated um, August 23rd, 2019. So this is, uh, you know, a road here, and this is obviously rainforest, and this is the trees, I think, before they've been burned. Um, and so basically, they're chainsawed, or you just go with heavy equipment. I think you can see the path here of the heavy equipment, and you use chains, and you just pull these things all over, and then you let them sit for a while, you let them dry out, and then you uh, basically burn them, either pull them all into a big pile and, and burn that big pile, right, would probably be the, the most, the easiest way to do it. Um, you know, because they're, they're pulled over and left spread out because then they'll dry, right? And then if you pull them all together and burn them, then you can see, you know, these are the, uh, I think I showed you this image here. Okay, the, the, this is August 2018 compared to August 2019. So 2019, a lot more burning than 2018. Okay. So, but I want to show you some of the plots from here. Okay, so this is aggregate annual tree cover loss in the Amazon 2001 to 2017. Um, and this is uh, using Hansen et al. 2018, Manga Bay uh, data. Tree cover loss in Amazon countries according to analysis of satellite data by Hansen et al. 2018. So you can see the increase here in the early 2000s, early to mid 2000. And you can see the um, you know, declining and then the decline here, and then the increase 2016, 2017. It doesn't have 2018 and 2019 data on it, but 2019 is much, much higher than, than 2018. This is uh, tree cover loss in the Amazon by country, excluding Brazil. Okay, so you can see, and this, this is uh, annual tree cover loss. So I believe it's 2001 to 2017 here. Okay, for each different country, and if you include um, the if you include Brazil, then you know the scale of Bolivia compared to Brazil is right. Bolivia is here, Brazil is here. Everything else goes off scale pretty much. The share of Amazon forest loss, 2010 to 2017. Okay, Brazil is the lion's share, 17,784. 17,784,762 hectares. Bolivia, you know, next, you know, but the others, all the other countries are dwarfed by Brazil, okay? Amazon forest lost relative to 2010 forest cover. Bolivia has a higher percentage of forest lost, okay? Um, Brazil is next, but of course the area of Brazil rainforest is much larger. It's about 60% of the total rainforest. Okay, Bolivia, I think, was about 10%. Peru is about 13% of the total, and the others less than that. Um, tree cover loss in the Amazon, different way of putting it here. Okay, that's, that's, uh, that's these numbers plotted out, right, instead of a pie chart, just like in this form. Okay, and it talks about individual countries here. So deforestation of the Brazilian Amazon, 1988 to present in terms of in square kilometers. And you can see, you know, it was high in some years. So 94, 95, you know, here's the early, here's the 20, 2000, 
here's 2002, three, four, five high, you know, and, and this shows 2018. So 2019 uh, is up high here, but it's not as high as, uh, as, as it was here. But of course, this is, the rainforest was much bigger back here. Don't forget that it's shrinking each year. So you wouldn't expect to be matching these numbers, but the impact of, of, of you know, as we get more and as it gets decreased in size more and more, um, the relative, the, the, the percentage of what's left becomes much larger. Okay, that, should, that graph should also plot that. Um, and it's not just, um, it's not just, uh, this is, it's not just forests in the, in the rainforest. This is forest lost by year in Brazil in the Amazon biome and countrywide. So, so the countrywide is the green and the Amazon is the, um, is the, uh, red. Okay. So you can see, you know, the bulk of it is in the, is the Amazon annual change in tree cover in the Amazon. This shows you, um, another plot here from Global Forest Watch and from the government. I mean, the government is downplaying all of these numbers. You can see, um, well, the Global Forest Watch includes fire and the, the government numbers here exclude fire. Not sure why that is. And it goes through that with each of the countries. Now, why it's on fire, lots of other articles here. Um, but one of the points is, is it talked about the drought here, three one in a century droughts. And this is a NASA um, image of some of the smoke from the burning. And it talks about these three major droughts considered once in a century event in 2005, 2010, and in 25, 2015 to 2016. You know, and of course, when there's drought, the trees shed extra leaves and or die, leaving leaf litter and detritus on the forest floor. There's no dense canopy to retain moisture, so the humidity is lost, right? You also get this with selective thinning, selective logging of specific tree species. Slash and burn opens the canopy further, dries out the understory and forest edges, and then the whole thing can be left to dry out and then set on fire. And it's estimated that about 99% of the fires ongoing in the rainforest right now are because of this hum basically human human caused. Now I talked about the tipping point and how the Amazon rainforest is a very vulnerable tipping point uh, on in terms of the global scale of things. So if you I went to Google Images and I typed in recycling of water in the Amazon rainforest and this is the best image that I could find and it's from a nature paper. So I looked at that nature paper and it's open access. Self-amplified Amazon forest loss due to vegetation atmosphere feedbacks. Okay, so reduced rainfall, you get forest die back when you have less forest. That can intensify regional droughts, and then you can get more dieback and more drought and more dieback and, and so on. And it's a self-amplified feedback, which could completely wipe out the Amazon rainforest. This is the, um, so you can have a look at this paper. I'd highly recommend it. It's a great paper. But the gist of it is that this is a type of thing that can happen. Okay, so... So think of the, you get the moisture coming in off the Atlantic Ocean, moving from east to west. Moisture inflow, it rains. There's evapotranspiration from the trees, producing a lot of moisture outflow up back up into the atmosphere. And the cycle continues. It rains again, evapotranspiration rains again. So this is what happens, you know, in, a, in the normal situation you get the water recycling and it can be recycle. It's shown four times here, but it can recycle a lot more. I think I read eight to nine times, some 10 times in some places. Then what happens is, what happens if you get rid of this forest here? The rainfall has to come further inland. There's probably less of it, right? So you still get rainfall here, but you get less. So if you, basically this shows an very important connection between all of the regions of the rainforest. You get rid of parts of the rainforest, you thin it out, you disrupt this recycling of water. 
you know, so this blue here is reduced moisture inflow, reduced rainfall, reduced evapotranspiration, reduced moisture flow. So the whole chain starts to weaken and eventually crash, okay, diminish, right? And you basically lose your Amazon rainforest, you lose all of that carbon that's in the rainforest, and you basically convert the whole region to uh, savanna grass and trees or just grasslands and you change the complete hydrological cycle and the soils are very poor so what will happen is that the farming you're not going to get a huge economic gain with all of this land for farming the soils are extremely poor i told you that the they require the dust coming from the um, sahara desert in order to supply the nutrients for the the rainforest so you basically get a forest shifting okay and there's lots of this shows you some of the the uh, tree cover percentage and some of the different types of forests that are there you know mostly evergreens um, deciduous you know shrubs herbaceous bare it shows you some of what happens as you get um, as the, as the uh, rainfall changes you obviously change the regime of the of the vegetation there's lots of plots here Forest resilience goes down, changes in evaporation. Um, this is the this is precipitation, which is ocean derived, divided by the total precipitation. So lots of this is all ocean derived, and as you get further and further inland, there's less and less precipitation that is not derived from the ocean. Okay, um, so when you lose the forest here, it affects everything downstream. This shows you forest cover percentage and um, if the rain how the rainfall regime can change and you can greatly reduce the forest cover the whole thing is is uh, you can get a whole collapse of the rainforest very very quickly okay so again you know open access paper have a look at it okay now in terms of oxygen i want to talk about um, how the um, Amazon fires are destructive, but they aren't depleting Earth's oxygen supply. So let me start talking about this, and I'm sure I'll have to continue this in another video because this is a very important factor that a lot of people are, are uh, concerned about. And, you know, it's not 20%. The Amazon does not produce 20% of the global um, oxygen on the Earth. Like I said, the, the best number I've seen is 9.5%. Uh, percent but what happens when there's no amazon rainforest to the oxygen product pro um, um, production on the planet okay so fires have captured worldwide attention okay the resurgence of forest clearing has de which decreased more than 50, 80 percent following a peak in 2004 has gone is is, is alarming for many reasons Okay, tropical forests harbor many species of plants and animals that are found nowhere else. It's a biological hotspot. It's a biological niche, right? Getting rid of these forests will, will have a tremendous um, detrimental effect on, on wildlife. It's like, it's like losing, the, you know, losing the coral reefs in the ocean. It's, this, it's the same sort of magnitude as losing the Amazon rainforest and in terms of um, effects on you know in terms of negative effects on biodiversity okay some media accounts have suggested that fires in the amazon threaten the atmospheric oxygen that we breathe you know macron tweeted that the amazon rainforest is the lungs which produce 20 percent of our planet's oxygen is on fire okay so there's some inaccuracy this you've, you can go on the web and you can see this 20 percent number everywhere and it's, it's a misunderstanding, okay? And uh, I pointed out that it should be 9.5% of the planet's oxygen instead of 16% um, of the on-land vegetation, oxygen produced by on-land vegetation, 16% is rounded to 20%, and that's of on-land vegetation. If you, you need to account for the oxygen produced by phytoplankton and that gives you the 9.5 percent number and i'll go into the details of that in a minute okay but basically um basically we've got this cycle here and what happens um you know a key thing that happens 
is okay so 